Hey guys, it's Ethan. Today I want to cover basic QEMU usage, so just QEMU through the command line, as well as basic for manager. So just enough to get a working VM, nothing special, no GPU pass through or anything like that. Just something very, very basic in case it wasn't covered well enough. Now if you're on Gentoo, there's a wiki page here for the installation of QEMU because it does require some kernel configuration. Besides that though, there are a couple use flags that we want to cover. So the ones that I would recommend that you have, besides your default, is GTK and SDL because you want them to have uh, graphical output. SDL is really nice, it's something that Vert Manager does not use and something that I really like. So give it a try. And besides that, there's also another wiki page I want to cover which is the QEMU options. So QEMU has a lot of flags and they can be confusing, thankfully. This wiki page I found as well also covers basically all of them, so you don't have to worry about figuring them out by yourself. You can do them this way. And then finally I have this last page, and I'm going to be linking all of these in the description, but this is just how to create a QCOW2 image in case you didn't know or my guide doesn't cover it well enough, because there's a little bit of configuration that you can use with this stuff. With that being said, let's get started. So, QEMU is a binary. So if I type in where is QEMU system x86 64, it'll basically show us that this is a binary itself. And there's a lot of options that you can use. So if I wanted to right now to make a VM, just launch one, not even create anything, I would be able to just to start typing in these commands. But you can imagine that this can get kind of complicated and really hard to forget what you're doing when you have to type in all of this stuff every time you want to launch your VM. So the solution is you'd want to make a script. In this case I'm calling it video.sh and it's calling bin slash bash. So I would make sure that you put that at the top of your script before we continue. First thing you want to do is call the binary and then you want to put a backslash and that's basically just saying visually this is a new line for us when in reality it's just another blank space. So same exact thing we were doing before. Now let's cover the options that I like to run my VMs with. I'm not going to be covering networking in this video because it can be kind of complicated and it's more than just writing in a script. Thankfully this guide actually does cover networking so this whole section for here feel free to read over it and maybe you'll get some working networking however you want it. So first thing I like to do is enable KVM with the dash enable KVM flag, or I guess it's a switch. And then dash M for machine type, this is capital M, Q35. Dash SMP, which is the core configuration, we're doing four cores, socket one, cores four, threads one. Dash CPU is basically just what type of CPU it's registering as and its options. I prefer to set it as my host CPU with the KVM equals on option. Finally, for like the basic stuff, dash M is memory, so 4096 is 4 gigabytes. You basically want to calculate gigabytes as 1024 times the amount of gigabytes. So if I have 4 cores and I want 4 gigs of memory, 1024 times 4 is 4096. This is, this is not really QEMU specific, this is just kind of basic knowing how many megabytes are in a gigabyte of RAM, but regardless, it's, it's read in megabytes. Dash VGA is the virtual graphics device. In this case, I'm going to put vert IO on, and for the display device, I want SDL with GL equals on. For boot, D, that basically says boot off of the CD-ROM. So dash CD-ROM is going to be the CD that we have in the system, so we can boot off of this like a live CD. I'm setting this to an Ubuntu ISO right here. Dash USB is like, I guess it's just a USB device, but we're setting this as a USB tablet with show cursor. You don't really need show cursor most of the time. This is, I think, actually deprecated now, but I still use it because some VMs can be iffy, I've noticed. Finally, dash drive, file equals, and then this is going to be where we have our QCOW2 file. You also want to set the index to zero, I mean, unless you have more than one drive media equals disk then input f or I guess if is that input file 
regardless. We want it to be the vert IO type and format QCow2. Before we launch this, we also need a uh, QCow2 disk. So how do we make one of those? If you do QEMU IMG create dash F, you can set the type to QCow2. I actually do have the guide open right here, but you see we we set the type to QCAV2, give it a name, give it a size. So it's very basic. So I made mine test.qcav2, and the size of it is 32G, which is gigabytes. That's how this drive was made. So with all of that done, we can now start our VM by calling the script. Now you might have to chmod plus x, which is how you change the permissions to an executable. So if I needed to, I could make this now executable by giving it the plus x mod. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to run it as root because most networking requi uh, requires root. So let's start. If you didn't know before, control alt is basically the modifier command or the modifier keys in QEMU by itself. So if I need to escape the window, I can do control alt G and now my cursor is free. Otherwise, it's usually locked. Control alt F full screens the VM. So if you don't want, or I guess if you don't have a tiling window manager where you can just control F, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you can do control alt F. So here we are in Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and just try Ubuntu just so I can show off really quickly that the VM is working and there's network and all that. So here we are. You can see that the display is pretty smooth. It is 60 Hertz, but Actually, it's 60 hertz for what happens in the VM, but the cursor, because it's a USB tablet device, it's pretty advanced. It's, it's very smooth. It's like 144 hertz like my monitor is. And something that you'll notice here is that we actually do have a bit of 3D acceleration inside of this VM. And that's because we have the SDL graphics device with uh, Vert.io and OpenGL on. That's one of the advantages that SDL works a lot better with NVIDIA than GTK does when it comes to 3D acceleration. And let's also take a look and see if we have network. So that's the thing right here. We don't have proper network because we didn't actually set network devices. So while it does read that we have a wired connection, it doesn't actually connect to internet. It takes a little bit more work to get network working through QEMU, which is one of the things that Vert Manager does better. So now that we've covered very, very basic just how to get QEMU running, I want to go over Vert Manager now because it's a more sophisticated option. Of course, I've already covered a lot of what it takes to get Vert Manager working, so I'm not going to recover that here. I do have a guide that I'll link in the description for the majority of what you need for Vert Manager, and I'll also be linking the Gen2 wiki page for it. To set up an actual VM using it though, all you need is to click the new virtual machine button up here. Actually, we should start off even more basic. You need a connection. The connection that you should be using is QEMU KVM and it should come default. So you have QEMU KVM. That should be working. You should have the services started. Once you do, you want to click new VM under the QEMU KVM network, local install, and then you want to select an ISO. Now you need to add pools to access the storage. So if I need to access my ISO's directory, I'll call it something and then I'll browse for it. So in this case, it's actually located right here so I can open it and that'll add it as a pool. Now I'm not going to do that right now because I already have it. If you make changes to it, you can hit refresh or you can add a new volume. This would be like a QCow2. You don't want to make one of these right now. So let's go down and let's find our ISO that we want to boot now in this case it's going to be Ubuntu as well same one so there it is let's choose the volume and it should automatically detect and if it doesn't you might have to specify what you're trying to run but for the most part it should detect it by itself let's proceed next thing is you want to set the memory and CPU so of course I'm going to do four gigabytes again with four cores next at this point, it's going to ask us if we want to create a disk for the virtual machine. Now, I do. So I'm going to let it do its default 25 gigabytes and select next. Finally, we need a name, and I'm going to call this video. And before we continue, 
we want to hit customize configuration before install and then finish. The reason that we want to customize installation is because it's the last time that we can edit things in the overview section. In the overview section we can control what chips that we use, of course we still want Q35, and we can also change the BIOS. Now if you have EDK2 OVMF, that's my preferred BIOS because legacy BIOS is not as good as EFI in my opinion. So I'm going to select this and hit apply. Next we're going to move over to CPU where we can look at the topology. If this doesn't look right to you, or you maybe want to change something, you can custom set your topology like this and apply it. Memory should be pretty self-explanatory, current allocation and maximum allocation. Boot options now. We can actually enable a boot menu, or we can set the VM to start on our host machine boot up. An example of where this is useful is like on my server computer, which you can see I'm ha I have uh, it down here. When I boot my server computer up, I expect my Pi-hole VM to start by itself, which is how it's done. You actually just enable start virtual machine on boot. Next thing you want to look at here is the disk. If it isn't set to vert IO, make sure to set it, unless the type of VM that you're making is an OS that doesn't have vert IO support. And then to actually boot, the CD ROM, we want it to be set to SATA. USB and SCSI might work, though I haven't had much luck usually. Now the network interface part can be kind of tricky. If you haven't set up a network bridge, it's not going to work very well for you, but you can typically just get it to work with a vert IO device. E1000E also works, but it's not as fast. Now I typically remove the tablet device by default because I like to replace it. Sound can stay as ICH9 and we don't really need to mess with these consoles. We do want display spice however. Video, QXL will work fine, but you do have options here. USB controller, you can set that up to USB 3 if you'd like. And these USB redirectors work through SPICE, and I'll be covering those in a second. Finally, we want to add hardware, and I typically add a VertIO keyboard and a VertIO tablet, though they're not entirely necessary. So, once you have all of this set up, which it's very basic, so you shouldn't be messing with too much every time you make a VM. You'll see right right away the VM will start and it'll work just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and let this boot real quick. So here we are, the VM is booted and you can see that there's a lot of black space around the display. If you'd like to you can go to the view tab at the top, scale display and you can set that to always. That'll basically just make this window bigger, it won't change the resolution of the VM. So if we click on try Ubuntu now, it's going to go ahead and load us in like before. Of course we're using UEFI this time, so it's going to be a little bit different. And also we're using the QXL graphics device, so you're going to need to install proper graphics drivers. Again, that's not something I'm going to cover in this video because it isn't QEMU specific. But you can see now we do have a working VM and everything is fine. You can also notice that we have more than one console. We have more than one device. So if you click on this light bulb, you'll see that we actually do have a serial console and we have these channel devices. If you want to know what these do, you can go to view, head to consoles, and you can see a serial console. Typically you won't need this. I've only seen output through this when I was using an ARM VM, or at least trying to, so that's something I guess just to keep an eye on. Now before, we had that redirect USB. Now how do we use that? Well if we go to the virtual machine settings and go to redirect USB device, you can choose one of these devices to redirect, and this isn't permanent, it's very temporary but it's something to use if you want to. If you don't like that option, you can also click Add Hardware, go to USB Host Devices, and select one of these devices to pass through. Works similarly, but it'll be persistent through reboots. You can do the same thing with PCI devices as well, but if you don't have the PCI device isolated, you might end up causing yourself a problem. For example, a graphics card isn't going to work unless you isolate it. Uh, this the USB 3.0 thing actually does work with no added isolation, so it's just it's case by case, so be smart about it, but you won't really do much harm, it'll just be annoying. We can exit out of this and head back into the VM, and there's one more thing I want to cover. 
when you're inside of a virtual machine like this, your, your keyboard and mouse are not isolated. So if I did Control alt f 2 right now, it would take me on my host system to a serial console number 2. If I need to do that inside of the VM, I can select uh, send key up here, and it has a list of all of these keys. So if I want, I can do Control alt f 2 and it's going to take this VM and give it that input. So in this case, F3 is actually what I want. F1 takes us back to... Oh, wow, that's cool. I've actually never done this on Ubuntu Live CD before. But yeah, so you can go between the consoles like this, and you can give any inputs that you need to. So with that being said, most of it's very self-explanatory, and it's actually really easy once you get used to it. And I'm also going to ping Google because it does work. So I hope this video was helpful, or at least a little bit informative. If you had any questions about how to get QEM you uh, working now on Linux, I hope that it was a little bit easier to understand. Now, again, I'm going to be linking resources in the description, and if you have any questions or any concerns, something that isn't working, reach out to me on my Discord server, again, link in the description. Well, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like this video if you enjoyed it or if it was helpful. Leave a comment if you have anything I can improve on. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.